Hello Indie Game fans, this video is brought to you by War Spear Online, which is a free-to-play MMORPG with some gorgeous looking pixel art. It has two factions with four races each, so quite the classic setup, with 16 classes, 8 crafting professions, PvP zones, thousands of monsters and objectives, and customization options for your character. In its most recent update titled Hectic Semester, the ancient school of magic opens its doors to a new generation of wizards. There are dungeons, school mysteries, world and guild events, as well as secrets to uncover. Fight against witchcraft and raid bosses and participate in dynamic events. If it does interest you, do check it out via the link in the description below. The indie game train continues to roll on, despite most bigger titles being delayed indefinitely, so my picks for the top 10 best indie games of the week starts with Unformed. This is a stylish, souls-like metroidvania from a Chinese developer and looks absolutely gorgeous. Explore an Eastern-inspired world while facing off against monsters and demons. This releases in early access, so the developer intends to take player feedback into consideration, but based on the action shown in the trailer, it should shape up to be a pretty good one. I love side-scrolling souls-like games, so always keen to check out more, which coupled with the art, makes this a must-get. I've been keeping an eye on this title for quite a while, since A Fold Apart is a bittersweet puzzle game about making a long-distance relationship work, with its gimmick of folding the stages like a piece of paper in order to allow the characters to connect. Since then, they appear to have added new mechanics like the ability to flip or roll up the level like a real piece of paper, so it certainly seems very clever in design. Cute, colourful art and should be a very pleasant game. This week marks the launch of the previously covered Eternal Radiance, a visual novel action-adventure RPG hybrid which I'm certainly interested in. Visual novels are not usually my thing, but add to that more action elements and we're getting somewhere. play as a young squire, Celeste, as she seeks to become a true knight but has to hunt down a thief and a mysterious stolen artifact in order to do so. While certainly not as polished looking as something like Nino Kuni 2, the combat does look fun with the combos satisfying to pull off. Been a little while since I last dug into an anime RPG, so this may just be the one. This is your circle. It is nice. 
This is not your circle. It is also ours. Attack! Take that circle! Take all the circles! Circle Empires from 2018 was a surprising hit with its almost Kingdom Rush style of unit design but as an RTS and Circle Empires rivals as in multiplayer. Out, monster, you square. No circles for you. It's Circle Empires rivals. New armies. New defenses. New game modes. New strategy. It will allow you to build a stable economy. The objective is to conquer all of the circles on screen with multiple game modes including co-op if you don't want to fight your friends. 25 plus faction leaders and 40 boss monsters at variety, but its simple, cute art style really works for this game. One of the cool early access titles that I've been keeping an eye on launches in 1.0 this week with Merchant of the Skies, a trading simulator where you fly an airship carrying cargo and crew buying low and selling high, while purchasing islands, fulfilling objectives, and paying tribute to the gods themselves. I love the look of this game, which is relatively simple but it works, with its share of gameplay and management systems as well. Just a quick note, if you are new here and enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe and check out the Discord channel while you are at it. Here's to more indie gaming coverage, so back to the video. If you love competitive action puzzle games like Puyo Puyo Tetris or Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, then Spark and Sparkle might be of interest. This is a super weird combination of things, which is something that I appreciate in indie games since it is a combination shoot 'em up and jigsaw puzzle game. One critical part of such games are the characters, of which there are 8, each with their own unique abilities. Not the strangest thing to come out of an indie game, but it's weird and cool, which I do like. There is an arcade mode, 1v1 quick play both against AI or locally, as well as online support. Excellent, you are awake. I have a very important task for you. I've also covered main assembly earlier, since this is a freeform building sandbox puzzle game in the vein of Besiege only with seemingly more tools at your disposal. Build cars, planes, forklifts, spider tanks and more as you outmaneuver the various obstacles thrown your way. There's quite an in-depth programming system where you can tweak the functions and logic of the various moving parts since you, the player, actually have control over the final product. Love these sorts of games, so a no-brainer for me. What are you waiting for? Do brilliant things, you spherical marvel. Different people have their go-to puzzle or logic games, whether it be Minesweeper, Tetris or Sudoku, but mine is Nonograms or Picross puzzles, so Pixel Cross Adventure got my attention this week.
This is a hybrid puzzle and adventure game where you solve nonograms, rebuild the world, and confront evil geniuses. Add RPG elements and a story to my favourite type of puzzle games and you instantly got me so pretty curious about this. Simple voice over here, since Galaxy Warfighter is an all-action bullet hell shooter with what seems to be a kick-ass soundtrack, so sign me up. Friends, countrymen, assorted magical creatures, lend me your ears. It breaks my heart that we must endure this undead calamity, but the fault is clear. It's these heroes of today. They've lost their way and lack the character to defend us. Something that I'm very excited to share is that the fantasy turn-based tactics title Fort Triumph is launching in 1.0 after about two years in early access. This game certainly takes me back since I did cover it on the channel back then and has been described as one part XCOM and one part Heroes of Might and Magic. The fantasy setting for a tactics game is a nice change of pace, and one of the main selling points here is the environmental interactions. You can push and pull enemies into each other and into hazards, causing pillars to collapse on them for example, with that familiar half or full cover system made familiar by Phyrexis. Since the initial launch, they seem to have added a base building element like Heroes of Might and Magic, included more factions for creatures to recruit from and expanded upon the dynamic, procedurally generated campaign since story events and enemies do pop up randomly. Been waiting for the 1.0 and this looks like it's in a great place right now, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, why not share it with a friend? Check out even more great indie gaming videos and in this current climate, stay safe and I will see you after the jump.